Hey, greetings folks. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today's video is something I probably should have made a long time ago. Anyways, I get a lot of questions about my vacuum collection, how many I have, what do I have? So I'm gonna do a small series, just kind of breaking it down into like the logical sections. Now I'm probably most known for my Euro trash collection. One of the biggest sections is my Hoover collection. I don't just have American Hoovers of a specific error. I have a multitude of Hoovers, as you'll see here. So today we're gonna go left to right. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them. And uh, if there's time, I'm gonna try to turn a couple on uh, that are special to me to show you those as well. Upon filming this, I got to thinking, I actually have two more of these that are in storage that are not complete. So I have a gray one, and then I've got a green bag with a beige body one of these as well. I really like Hoover Concept Ones, I guess. And I have a later model here, which has the power drive, but no headlight, very strange variant. I have one without a power drive, but has the cord rewind. And then I have just like the OG deluxe model that has everything. And I really, really, again, like these machines. I think they're kind of underrated in the vacuum cleaner collector community. In fact, I would go as so far to say, I like these over a Hoover convertible, which I'm sure somebody in the comments will get very upset with me saying. Anyways, so those are my Hoover Concept Ones. And I believe I featured a couple of these in a video I did about how vacuums handle. Hoover Concept One, this is like the deluxe one, the one I've had the longest. I love this machine. Oh, Machines. And who doesn't love a cord rewind on a vacuum cleaner? It doesn't get tangled. I mean, that is just so cool to have. I guess we'll run this one too, since it is just a different experience to run one that you don't uh, have. power surge or the two speed is just so funny to have that but not have a self-propelled. Next up I want to talk about my Bojack special and this machine was a dumpster rescue from someplace I worked. Uh, the other manager at the place at the time who also uh, <laughs> was the reason I quit that particular establishment decided he was gonna just trash this machine and this machine had been trashed. It was full of Kirby cake. It was beat and I said, you know what? I think I can save that. So I got to work, lubric re lubricated the motor, found a uh, Dyson cord that had just been thrown out, attached that with this plug. Uh, and then I had some extra spray paint laying around from a Halloween uh, costume. So it got the gold and silver treatment. Uh, and you know what? It's been running ever since. And if you notice here, I even did the uh, gold treatment on the faceplate there. I'll tell you what this thing really is because I actually don't remember. Um, it is a model 1070. And uh, if you look underneath, it's got that beautiful turquoise color. And uh, man, it, like I said, it was just beat to shit. It's a metal base Hoover. And it's just like one of those vacuums that was just really special. Because I got it for free, I put very little into it. And it's just been working ever since. And then on top of it, I loaned it to a friend of my wife's who needed a vacuum for her apartment. So for about two years, this thing was on full apartment duty and worked just fine and it still works. All right, I've switched to the studio mic. Uh, so you know what that means. We're gonna turn some machines on and you're gonna hear how they sound. how quiet this machine was. It is so quiet. I guess I should also share, usually I retro mod the bag. And you can still get Hoover 
Genuine HEPA A bags. Uh, yeah, so this machine is running Hoover Genuine HEPA A bags. I'll try to put a link below to those if they're still available on Amazon. I just want to state I am not looking to get any more Hoovers. Except for, well, maybe there's some canisters I'm looking for, like the Dimension 1000, things like that. Anyways, let's go with uh, maybe the first upright Hoover I collected, which would be uh, probably this machine right here. This is a Hoover convertible, and this just came into my store one day, and I wanted to save it. I liked it. It wasn't in the best of condition, and unfortunately, if we look, yeah, it's got a cracked base. It is what it is. There's probably an early video of this thing on YouTube that I made to show a collector friend of mine. So this is just one of the first machines uh, that I collected. I think the next upright that I collected, because I actually collected the canisters first, um, I just realized this isn't all of them, actually. Uh, there's one more. But this, uh, I rebuilt this at some place I worked at, and then I much later rebuilt this with my friend Reggie on camera. Anyways, I love Hoover Concept Ones. They're just like these big, beefy American machine that cleans really well, but actually doesn't have great numbers. All right, so these are like the four Hoover convertibles I currently own. I have this wonderful vintage machine, uh, which was given to me by another collector who got it from another collector, David Waters, RIP, who passed away. So I'm just honored to have this. I actually knew David Waters briefly in his last year, so I was just glad to have uh, had one of those machines. The machine to the left was just a, again, basement find, and I saved it. We talked about the red machine, and the green machine is perhaps another special machine. Now, a link below to the Discord but in the Discord, we have the green Hoover convertible as an emoji in there. And so I, of course, had to have a green Hoover like this. And I'm just happy to have it. It was one of those things that came to me from my friend Ryan. He picked it up at a garage sale for like 10 bucks, and I'm just happy to have it. And it's just a wonderful machine. And I guess you want to know the exact models of these Hoovers. So the first one here, this blue one, is a U4163. Our green special machine is a U4127. The red machine is a U4371. And the David Waters machine, I believe is a model uh, 719. As a lot of you know, the metal base convertibles just kind of hit differently. So, uh, <laughs> this carpet is so low. This one's got a four uh, height adjustment instead of the usual three. special. I guess it's time to talk about the convertibles that are not convertibles. I have a Guardsman C1431. This is like a TTI era machine and it's probably one of the last convertibles made. It It's Chine it's Chineseium <laughs> to say the least. It's not a bad machine but it, it I don't know. It's just like one of those machines again it was a thrift store find for $10.99 uh, and then was 50% off that day. So, you know, who could say no to that? Uh, so I have that. The next are uh, other thrift store finds that I really, really love. I think a lot of people don't realize how much I love old vacuums. And the Decade 80 is one of my favorite, favorite machines. Because it's a Hoover convertible that's been modified and updated. It's kind of like how the XL21 
was really just an auric with a different fan slapped on it. This is the same sort of thing. They took a classic convertible design, like this machine, and put a different hood on it. And I really like these. I have a video of me rebuilding these. Uh, interesting enough, one of these has a metal fan chamber. One of them does not. One of them is two speeds. One of them is a one speed machine. So <laughs> really funky to see the differences here. Uh, but I love Decade 80s and I have definitely run these through my house quite a few times. The one that's a little bit more discolored, I've used more. I feel bad about using this other one that's a pristine example. And I guess it's probably time for me just to talk about the other things I have that are that color real quick. Let's move this flying saucer over. Now, I'm never one to be super picky about the color of vacuums, but I love the IBM gray color that Hoover used on these machines. In fact, I even have a Hoover Concept 1 that's this color that I eventually will fix up and uh, put out. I just love, love this color. So I guess real quick, we're gonna talk about the Hoover Celebrity. Um, I have a whole video on the Hoover Celebrity and why it's weird, but it is just an awesome vacuum. And really before it's time, it has all these idiot lights on the back. The power head doesn't work if it doesn't have a light bulb. It's just such a weird quirky machine. And it was fairly powerful for its time as well. And you know, the Hoover Celebrity used to float <laughs> and then it got so bloated with shit that they had to put wheels on it. And this model is probably like the peak of bloating existing designs and trying to get the most out of the designs. And I, I really appreciate when companies do that. Uh, but some companies, Kirby, uh, do need to just retire their designs. So, and the celebrity was retired eventually. But I love this machine. It has all the bells and whistles and I guess is fairly rare from my understanding. Really a joy to use. That's my Hoover Quiet Series Electronic Celebritard. But I would love to have the Dimension 1000 in my collection here uh, to finish my IBM Gray collection. I kind of would also like to have an 80s IBM. My dad had two of them sitting around when I was a kid, and I just remember playing with them. Go check out LGR. He has a whole video on those 80s IBM computers. Anyways, back to vacuum cleaners. All right, this green celebrity is one of my favorite color machines. This like seafoam green, I just love it. I know Tom Gasco has a whole set of these on displays. I love to get a whole set of lime green or seafoam green, whatever you want to call this green that Hoover made. Now this one is not mine. This one belongs to my friend Ryan, but the hose was crushed. And because I have the other one with a good hose, he brought it over here to use, uh, to basically use my hose. Man, that sounds horrible. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about though, and it's not what it sounds like. I have a very nice hose for this, and it came with, well, I don't know what this is to, like a spirit or something, but it got crushed, and it's kind of dry rotted. I also have a nice open space, so we often meet as collectors and just vacuum here, and it's been here kind of just ever since, chilling. Uh, so it's kind of like the community Hoover celebrity. I love this little vacuum. Again, not technically mine, but it's been sitting over here for a while. I thought I'd show it off. All right, so I've got the community celebrity here. I guess it's a real celebrity then. bearings could use a little bit of grease. Again, because these hoses had a tendency to crack and mine is probably starting to crack. That's how it kind of came into my possession or why it's here. So it can be enjoyed. 
The other thing that is a quality of life improvement is you can take a little bit of hot glue to one of the plastic bag fittings and just glue it on a Henry bag and that definitely increases filtration and airflow, makes the motor breathe a little easier, uh, and it makes us breathe a little easier. So that's something that has been done to this. And I guess one other thing is I should start up and I'll let you hear the low and the high speed. It really is a pleasant vacuum to use and listen to. I have these two TTI machines. And over the years, I have tried to reach out to TTI and just work with them as a uh, quote-unquote influencer. Man, I hate that term. Oh, and it looks like the meat dog has decided to join us. So if you like Fafa and you like Hoovers, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Anyways, these I have review videos and unboxing videos and probably repair videos. Uh, these, I was lucky enough to have TTI send me these years ago now, and I made some content with them, and I've just kind of kept them since it's kind of special when a vacuum cleaner manufacturer kind of recognizes the channel. My Hoover Elites. And I have a confession to make. I don't like Hoover Elites, and I think they are the most overrated thing next to dirt doubles in the vacuum cleaner collector community. I don't get why people love them. I hate how they sound. I hate the vibration. They don't work on my particular type of carpet upstairs, so I can only use them in this room down here in my house. They don't work on hard floor. They're loud. They leak dust. And in my opinion, this was kind of the start of the downfall of Hoover. I understand they needed a budget machine or they thought they did at the time and Anyways, I just, I just don't like that. But I have the most basic one without a height adjustment, and I have, like, the most deluxe one. Um, and I probably have had a few others that I've bought and sold off because I know kids go crazy for them. So if I see them at thrift stores, I will pick them up uh, and clean them up and throw them uh, for sale to some collectors who want them. And that's the thing. If I'm ever thrifting and I see something, even if I don't want it and it's in nice condition, I will just pick it up and find it a new home because I think it's really important. Uh that even though I don't like this particular vacuum, there are people who do and will really love this, so I would like to find anything like that a good home when I'm out thrifting. All right, I have the Hoover Elite Legacy piece of shit. Uh, so that's one thing I don't like about them, the really cracking. Let's, uh, let's listen to this thing. This has been greased up and taken care of. Let's listen to this thing go. The vibration that this machine makes and the frequency of the motor has always bothered me. Next are some cordless machines I own, and I've done reviews on some more modern who cordless machines, and hopefully we'll be doing some more reviews soon on some of their newer lineup. But these machines are kind of a favorite form factor of mine, which is a upright that's two-thirds size. You saw me really like the Lindhouse. I really like this style machine. This one to the left, as we all know, is really just an Oric XL21. Man, it's just it's such a cool machine. Uh, and th this other one is interesting. So I worked at a place that was a warranty center, and you would just throw out three, four, five, ten of these at a time. And I've pieced together a few machines this way over the years. But <laughs> obviously I could make a whole machine off of what was being thrown out. And I did. Uh, bat two batteries and all. Uh, so this machine... Maybe it doesn't sound in the best of health. And I have... A whole video of this on, my, on the channel. But this machine is a machine that I pieced together and saved. And I'm just happy to have it. It is a objectively a horribly underpowered machine. But the concept is good in that it's like a two-thirds size upright with onboard tools. And, you know, it does the Dyson thing where the handle removes. Um, it's kind of leaning to the side right now. And it's been... Si that's new. It didn't used to do that. Um... 
but it is what it is, and it's one of the only bagless machines I have. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but the core of this, this is really a Hoover, and this was made to compete with the Oryx. I have a whole video on this vacuum. Go check that out. But this Arius Fresh Hera is definitely a Hoover at the core of it, and I would love to get the Royal and the Hoover counterpart to this one day. All right, next, I'm sure somebody's gonna yell in the comments that this is not a real Hoover. It's a Hoover to me. Um, and I think these were like 30 bucks or something. They were on closeout. Uh, everybody on Vacuum Land bought at least one of these. A lot of people bought two or three of these. Uh, and it's got a handle here, it's lifts here, and it's like a GE Roll Easy, but in horrible, horrible uh, Vax fashion. And it is like a Vax Hoover product. Anyways, you can definitely tell that they own Ryobi. And they reused some pallets for this, for these series of air vacuums. Anyways, it was so strange. It was one of the first unboxings I did, one of the first like long ass reviews I did. Um, so yeah, this machine, man, it's, it's just so weird and quirky. And it's like new, this is not as old as, You'd think this was like early 2000s, but no, this this machine's like four or five years old. Super weird. Happy to have it. Uh, it's one of my only bagless machines. In fact, I probably have like five or six bagless machines, and like three of them are Hoovers. I think I have two Dysons, an Airway, and uh, an Electrolux. Yeah, th those are my bagless machines. So uh, under 10. But like I said, the one I have the most of are Hoovers. And I guess I should show on camera because it's so, this is just such a weird ass machine. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it just ejects the dirt cup and pre-motor filter. No idea why that is, um, but that was the decision that was made that day at Hoover. And I love the weirdness of this machine. Man, it's probably in 1080p, but I definitely have a video on the Hoover Constellation that I have. And I bought this, it was really beat up for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks from like the son of a customer who came in looking for bags. And I say son, the guy was in his forties. Uh, and I said, oh, when I saw it was Hoover J bags, I was like, that's not a Constellation. And he was like, yeah. It's like, I'll buy that off you. And we negotiated a price and I bought it and my coworker, uh, Pam called me crazy at the time, and uh, that's kind of one of the things that kicked off me collecting vacuums. Now, this attachment is also curious. You know, it's self-levels. It's got this hose here, and it's got a very concentrated suction path. Now, I know this was developed by Vesselwork, and they probably didn't even know this existed. Uh, but Vesselwork also developed a straight suction tool with a hose right there that also self levels. So this tool, why exclusive to the old series Hoovers, lived on in Mila and you'd also see this tool later get cheapened up in all sorts of vacuums. You can get a Henry or a Bosch uh, or even the current model Mila's with some sort of variant of that ultra thin path, ultra efficient, uh, straight suction nozzle. So I think, you know, Hoover was really ahead of the time doing that. Um, unfortunately they're worn out, but there's brushes that go up and down. They're spring loaded and there's some rubber lint pickers. Oh, this machine just has like an odor. It's probably rusting from the inside, but I love it. And I absolutely, this is just like one of my favorite vacuums of all time. And I would love to have a couple more of these. And I have a, just a J bag in here. I don't even have a HEPA bag in here. Oh, you know what I, what I did? Okay. I see what I did back then. So I have crevice nozzle, dusting brush, and I have a recar bag, HEPA bag that was cut up to use as a pre-motor filter. This is probably from like a Radiance or something uh, back in the day. Just love this little vacuum. And I probably have uh, three or four videos already on my channel of this machine. So in order to preserve this early stretch hose, and this might've been one of the first, if not the first machine with the stretch hose, it's definitely one of the first machines with a telescoping wand. Oh my gosh. Uh, I need to put some something to preserve that in there. And if you don't know, these old Hoover wands had gaskets in them. Very, very cool. Let's 
go ahead and do some hoovering. Clicking that together is just part of the experience. All right, let's fire up the Hoover. It's so quiet. Float effortlessly on the cushion of air. At least move over the cord. I have never lubricated that motor. I opened it up, maybe I lubricated one side, I might lie, but I, I, and nothing has been done in this machine in over a decade. I got it maybe 2007, 2008-ish, I've had this machine, and it's just so smooth. Uh, it's one of those things I hope to preserve this as long as I can. I can see, unfortunately, this is the last time I was on camera, there's a small crack in this hose. But it's just like one of those things that it's bound to happen. And the fact that I've preserved this, and this has been in the dry climate of New Mexico and now Colorado, and it's still all right, is just amazing to me. I love this machine. I used to vacuum my apartment regularly with this machine. That's how much I love this. And I had it on the wall. All right. This next one is a sad one. And one of... The ones I've had the longest. So I took this apart to grease the bearings and rebuild it. And upon doing that, the reverse thread nut uh, seized halfway up the shaft. I had to cut it off, and I have not found another reverse thread nut. So again, if you have one of these, send me an email. My shit's below, or hit me up on Discord. I would love it if somebody had one of those nuts. I'd love to put this back together. I love this machine. And it's a uh, it's an S. 3121 and funny story about this machine so i sold this lady a mila a week before i should see it on craigslist for 20 bucks i show up to her house she's like oh you sold me your my vacuum i'm like oh yeah i sure did here's 20 bucks i'd love to have that i collect vacuums anyways so this my hoover constellation and my electrolux model 30 used to all sit on my wall in my in the two apartments i've had and I also had a Lewitt on the wall. And I just thought it was such a colorful, beautiful, contemporary design. I had it on the wall. I, I see this as like a sculpture almost. Uh, and I have a video or two of this up in 1080p. Uh, so I hope to finish rebuilding this one day. All right, there's a 40 minute video of me talking about this machine in a review format. So I'll keep it short. I have a Hoover wind tunnel still. I still hate it. I don't use it. But these were so common, and I fixed so many over these years, I feel the need to preserve a copy of it, even though it's bad. So I have this. It's not going anywhere. It's not for sale. Uh, I know there's a collector who loves, loves, and loves this machine um, and only like collects these. Uh, you can't have it. No, you can't have it. This one's mine. Uh, so that's my Hoover wind tunnel. Ah, yes, I also have a Hoover guardsman that is in desperate need of rebuilding and again i just haven't had the time to do it but eventually you'll see me redo this and if you want to support the channel definitely go check out the links below uh our patreons currently help fund a lot of this so big thank you to all of our patreons who are so generous and help us fund that and if you'd like to become a patreon and help us out i sure do appreciate that now i know this is not really a hoover but hey my good friend Daniel gave this to me. This was also available under the Maytag name. And it's been on the list of machines to rebuild. Again, I just haven't had the chance. And this is one I'm really excited to rebuild. But again, I, I am pretty busy. So I'm hoping that in 2023, by the end of the year, I get a chance to rebuild this and put it to work. So big thank you to Daniel for giving me that. Ah, oh, shit. Some more thrift store finds. I told you I really like Hoover 
constellations and celebrities. Well, I have a celebrity too. It needs a hose in something for the power nozzle. It's been a while. As most of you know, I work two jobs now and I just haven't been able to put this together. And I have a Montgomery Awards convertible. Of course I do. And uh, yeah, so those have to be put together as well. Yep, I have a dialomatic too, but it's not rebuilt. And I got it 50% off on sale. And this is sat here for a while. Uh, if you're not familiar with a dialmatic, let's see, what did I pay for that? So I paid uh, $11 for it. Uh, dialmatics are complicated, hefty machines. They were the first uh, self propelled machine. Anyways, I've been meaning to finish rebuilding this, it's been sitting in my shop for a while. All right, big thank you to everybody who sat through this, letting me show off my Hoover collection. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Anyways, so big thank you to all our Patreons and everybody for watching. 17,000 subscribers. Pretty humbled by that. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Nobody does it like you The way that you do Nobody's got the power to please me Nobody does it like you Puts it all together Like you.